نادة ثلاثة ذو الحجة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Good day and I hope that you have a good day today Today the third day of the الحجة uh, One of the most The holiest 10 days in the year of Islamic calendar And I hope that you can uh, achieve your potential by doing good deeds, carrying, helping people, advising people, fasting, giving charity, and doing something else. But these are the best 10 days of the year. Uh, and I hope that each and every one of you is observing these 10 good days of the year. Today we are going to talk about uh, the hungry people cannot think properly. Second part of agriculture and seeds, and the culture and the economy. I know that this subject could be very specialized and might be boring for some of you, but I have to do it because it's very important for all of us, especially the young men and women who wanted to make a project, who want to start a project, especially if it's an agriculture project in the middle of the desert in any country or in the Middle East or in the Far East or in the uh, Near East. I thank all my team, Muhammad Nijm and Ahmed Sheikh and Abdurrahman Nahas for helping me and actually for actually helping me in designing and translating and doing the research on this. Grains or seeds. Grains is very important and crucial to any society, no matter where, how rich, or how affluent such a society. Grains are the people's life. If scarce, they become hungry, and if absent, they are at loss. It's as simple as this. Grains are the foundation of economy, any economy globally. Any economy globally, regardless of the richness or the power of the state. Grains are the foundation of economy. Those who produce grains have a mighty state. But those who import them, their state will be at the bottom of the nation's list. Say it again. Grains are the foundation of the economy. Those who produce it have a mighty state, but those who import them, their state will be at the bottom of the, nation, of the nation's list. If you want to keep your state at the top or the middle of the list of nations, you have to be independent in producing your grains. Grains in Quran, Surah Yusuf, can we see the, uh, the ayah? And you know the dream, the dream of the king of Egypt at that time who saw the seven fat cows being eaten by seven skinny cows. And he cannot find anybody to explain such a dream. But one of his uh, advisors was in the courtyard and told him, yes, I know somebody who can do that. Because the monks in the temple failed to explain it. And he went to Yusuf. Hazrat Yusuf السلام, who was in prison at that time and they told him the dream of the king. And Hazrat Yusuf السلام, explained that by uh, you have to the, cultivate properly the land for seven years. The harvest of the seven years will be plenty but you have to store it properly. We have to keep it properly in storage and we can take our share of eating, our consumer, our co consumption every year from it. To keep this storage or to keep this harvest or to keep these seeds or grains for the seven bad years. And at the end of the explanation of the dream, he said to them, and the year number 15 will be a very, very fertile year and more than you expect. So the first seven years will be good years. We need to manage to store these seeds properly 
as well as the second seven years, you have to use what you have stored in the storage area or in the uh, silos. Actually, uh, 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 to eat it in the coming seven years. Going back, this is the Quran. In the Bible, chapter 6, John, after Jesus, peace be upon him, fed the people with his miracle, and Jesus has a lot of miracles, alayhi salam. They were very happy and they were content, and actually they start to believe in him. You know what he told them? You believe in me because you ate the bread, not because you believe in my miracle. Chinese wisdom, which is the title of the talk, is Hungary does not think wisely. And if you remember the French Revolution, when they went to the queen or they went to somebody there and they told them, they told her or them, Mary Antoinette, and she said, if they don't have bread, they can eat gâteau. And you know the story that her head was separated from her body in a very brutal way. These are the different kinds of grains that we need to have in our country and in every country. Wheat, importantly, barley, corn, rice, millet, lentils, bread, broad beans, fava beans, bees, fava beans, especially for the Egyptian, the Sudanese, and the Middle Eastern and bees and others. These grains or seeds and others constitute what? The bulk of food eating globally. If you go from as far east as we can, far west or far north or far south, we all eat most of this grain. So what's the problem now? Why Muhammad Najm and Ahmad al-Sheikh and Abdul Rahman helped me to do this? Why the problem? What's the problem? First of all, there's a shortage of lacking of grain sufficient to the people. Okay, this is number one. Number two, we depend on importing these grains from foreign countries. It's a big, 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 uh, it is, we we'll call it economical uh, occupation. Okay, or imperialism. Number three, depending on foreign aid. Sometimes. Number four, lack of foreign currency. Number five, uh, inability of identifying the quality of grain that we can bring from abroad. So the problem lies in shortage of grain, depending on importing, depending on foreign aid, lack of foreign currency, and inability to identify the quality of the grain. Why there is shortage of grains in our country? Why? Okay, there's 10 points who tell us why there's shortage. Maybe because we are not investing in agriculture, because we have weak or lack agriculture infrastructure, water, suitable fertile land and canals, because the lack of technical expertise and materials, because the lack of qualified human resources to cultivate the land and to guide the people, the farmers, because of weak agricultural sector as a whole in our country, weak and insufficient governance and leg leg legislation procedure to protect grains plantation. You know, the one of the corrupt country, dictator country, all this kind of dictatorship. Less financial reward to the farmer. The farmer might find, okay, fine, there's no much money coming out from the land, so let me sell it, actually, and go and buy, a, 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 make a shop and start to trade. Uh, climate change, as we all face, security. The land is not secure because the, cover, the, the government is fragile or the failing state and storage, bad, bad storage facilities. So these 10 points will lead to shortage of grain. Financial resources, shortage, weak or lack of agricultural infrastructure, water, uh, suitable fertile land, lack of technical expertise, lack of qualified human resources, weak agricultural sector, weak and sufficient governance, and uh, legis leg 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 uh, legislation procedure to protect the grain plantation, Less financial reward for the farmer, climate change, security, and storage. Now we talk about humanitarian organization interfering. When? Okay, it'll be based on the need of the community, number one. 
for certain kind of grain. Because some community needs certain kind of grain because they get used to it. Our, our, our first one, the urgent need of community for certain kinds of grain are weak community participation and production compared to foreign revenue either through aid or imports. This is number one. But the, the, the crucial point here is the community has to call upon you. Second is the value of interference. Our value of interference. What are we going to What's our added value when we interfere? We should lead our interference to a positive change in the agriculture sector in the local community. And this would be measured through producing sufficient amount of needed uh, material for the people within a certain period of time. And we need to measure it by the time scale and the quality scale and the amount scale of the production. Okay? The ability of us making the change through available resources. We have to let them to depend on the available resources. And number four, uh, participation of the local community with us. They have to participate with us. They have to accept us. Otherwise, we cannot actually interfere. Stages of interference, the seven stages of interference, because agriculture is not a joke. Agriculture and industry, and each stage of this is an industry by itself. Seeding and agriculture at the very beginning, looking after production, second point, harvesting, third point, control units to manage the storage and pricing, the market, price valuation units, and management. All these seven points by themselves are each one of them constitute a part of the industry of grain production. And each one of them is an industry by itself. Challenges facing interference in every stage, seeding and agriculture. What to offer them? Why? We gave them seeds, antiseptic materials, technical materials for seeding, guidelines, water irrigation, fuels, instrument and, uh, and instrumental maintenance, we also train farmers, landlords, and civil servants. This is regarding the first stage of giving them the seed to start the agricultural process before the production start. Second point to offer them fertilizers, grazing, weeding tools, pesticide, water storage units, fuel for water irrigation, solar energy, and others. Maintenance of irrigation networks, lakes, dams, canals, reservoirs, deep wells. All these kind of things, we have to provide them with guidance. Also, weather warning system, we have to warn them about the climate change. Measures that can protect them uh, from weather and climate change. And at the bottom, again, farmer's training. Farmer's training goes every, at every steps. Okay, this is number two. Number three, harvesting. We starting to harvest our land, give them harvesting tools and instruments and machines. They give them sacks and cereals containers. They give them spaces, provide them with spaces for storage and means of transportation and documentation. They have to teach them the process of the industry of har harvesting and industry Looking after the production is industry. Seeding is industry. Number four is control units. Managing storage and pricing. We have to advise them how to sell at the right time by doing support of community storage depot. Management of stored product. Controlling sales time. Tell them you sell on the beginning uh, at the beginning of August, the beginning of September, or middle of October, and this where the price of the uh, grains or the product you have is the maximum. Yeah, and controlling sales time for maximum profitability. Okay, examples open. Like, we, we we guide them to for the storage. We give them the actual storage then grain silos, grain silos antiseptic treatment and capacity building, a capacity building again and again and again for the farmers, especially for the storage of the grain. So on this one, guide them when and how to sell the product that they have. Number five, the market. Go to the market. 
Now we finish with the farmer, we finish with the landlord, we finish with the process of agriculture or the industry of agriculture. Now we we'll go to the market. We have a market in the local market. What to do to the market? We go to the market to maintain the maintenance of the market infrastructure. We need tables. Uh, we need security. We need uh, salesmen. We need brokers. We need uh, documentation. We need all these sort of things. Okay, maintenance of marks infrastructure and roads, even the roads, to make it easy and accessible to the land. Those leading to such markets, supporting local businessmen in the market to start providing necessary materials for marketing and brokering, connecting different marks together, providing loans to the businessmen and to the farmers, organizing agriculture festivals and carnivals in different locations. See, this is once we finish the agriculture process, we'll go to make the market profitable and the process of sales profitable by maintenance of the market infrastructure, roads, and actually supporting local businesses, providing necessary materials for market and brokering, connecting different marks together, providing loans, organizing agriculture carnivals and different cities. And actually providing capacity building program for businessmen and brokers. So the capacity building here in the market will be of room for the brokers and the businessmen. Number six, price valuation units. Okay. We need to support as a humanitarian organization, as a civil society organization, the price, the industrial units connected with the grains. What are these industrial units? The mills, the drying units, the bakeries, the starch and pasta factories, further industrial units, chemical industrial units, syrups, juices, food industrial units. We have to support them. Huh? to let them benefit like the governments in Europe were supporting the farmers the governments in Europe supporting the bakeries the government in Europe supporting all these kind of accessory units which make the grain product productivity and uh, profitability higher for the farmer so the farmer can keep can keep can keep planting the grains this will be through maintenance, supporting production costs, supporting production costs, networking, marketing, and training. We are coming back again. How to support these units, which is mills, drying units, bakeries, starch and pasta factories, uh, fodder industrial units, chemical industrial units, serum and juices, food industry, and so on, and so on, and so on, through supporting production costs, networking, and marketing, and training again. Training at every step of the industry of grain production. Number seven, management. Management has to go from the farmer in the, in the farm to the market, to the businessman, to everybody. Supporting the different management system in the sector as a whole, whether family-run unit, individuals, or community farmers. This is through supporting farmers, local community, organizations, local municipalities, governments, uh, either by building their capacity, providing them with necessary materials and the resources they need. So training, capacity building goes from seeding to the government in organization and local municipality. And all these seven steps of the industry of producing grains, we have to do it. Invest in capacity building, invest in training, invest in guiding, invest in documentation, plus invest in the technique of increasing the profitability of the farmer at every step of the agriculture and of the production, of, of the storage, and of the distribution, of, of the marketing of the grains. And as you can see, this photograph is the... Is there some wrong uh, uh, English here? I, I don't think. Grains are the lives of people. I think it is. Uh, anyway, uh, there's something wrong here with, uh, with the English. First, 
When we go to this cycle of industry of producing grain, we go from the land, the good water, the good seed, then agriculture, then pesticide, then harvest, then production, storage, package, packaging, and sterilization. There's a mistake here as well, packaging and sterilization, price control units, transportation, uh, distribution, markets, valuation units, and so on. So when you look at the industry of producing grains, it goes on these 14 points and more. So any young man and woman would like to go to the agriculture, they have to realize that it's not just a mere luck or we can just do anything. We might do, we might double or triple or quadruple our effort to produce the same outcome of product. But when we plan it this way, it's looking at the land, the water, the quality of seeds, the agricultural process, what pesticide, the harvest time, production, storage, packaging, sterilization, price control units, and transportation, distribution, market, valuation, and so on. This is the process of building the industry of uh, producing grain in our country. This is a call upon you, young men and women. You are frustrated because your economy, uh, the economy of your country is downhill. And you knew, all of you, that your country is extremely rich. Your country has rivers, has lands, has good weather, has all the potential. But your government could be corrupt, could be dictatorship. That's why they benefit from wasting the land and selling the fertile land and spoiling the economy of the country to keep themselves in office. So my appeal to all of you, young men and women, is don't be deceived by whom? By those who say imported materials are more important than production. Never imported material create colonialism to you and to your country. Two, those who say imported materials are cheaper than production. Never. The investment in the land and the production in the first five years will be rewarded later on. To keep you actually independent and keep you credible and keep you uh, managing your own resources perfectly. In the long term, it will become cheap but you have to invest in it. Number three, the quality of imported materials is better than the quality of the local products. Never. You know how? It becomes uh, better than your local material because you sell their imported material in your local market so they make profit, then they go back to improve the quality of the material. But if you sell your own product and you keep developing your local market, you keep developing your product, your, the quality of your product will be far more better than any imported material. Those who say more employees, more employees reduce the marginal profit, never, because we have to invest in the social capital. We have to invest in the social capital and we have to provi provide jobs for many young people like yourself, unlike myself, unlike others, whether in the agricultural industry or in any other industry. Never. Tell them that production is honor, young men and young women, to answer this. Tell them production is honor, it's independence, it's building a stable, credible character. When I have the seeds or the grains that come out from my land, I'm very proud of it, showing. And this come in the Surah of Al-Kahf about the, the man who has the two gardens. He was so proud of his gardens. So proud. Oh, come and see. Honor, independence, building a stable, credible character. Production is, is abundance, is motivation is empowerment of human resources. The more we produce, the more we empower our local human resources.
the more we fight unemployment and jobless and corruption. Production is a guarantor of keeping the agricultural land and, that, uh, and the creation that Allah created to support human beings alive and existing. Allah has created all this creation for all of us. The more production you have from the land, the more the keep the agriculture, keep the agricultural land. It's a shame that we destroy our agricultural land. It's a shame that we sell it. It's a shame that actually we change it into commercial or residential places. Like we see in Europe nowadays, everywhere there's green, green belt and there's untouchable area of agricultural land. In spite of the fact that the weather does not help Europe to maintain or to keep or to grow or to graze those grains, but they manage to give themselves the independence by growing the wheat it took England or UK about 20 years to make research to produce wheat. And when we go to countries like X and Y and Z, when they were actually wheat producing countries, now they are importing wheat from different countries. It's a shame and disloyalty to the country. Tell them that we can treat the salty, marsh, and deserted land. Yes, we can treat it. And we can cultivate. And we can produce from it. Tell them the more manpower means fighting unemployment, our optimum gain is in job creation and the money recycling in the local market. Tell them the quality of our local products is in ownership and the quality of the imported product is in our fellowship to the foreign companies. The quality of our local product is in our ownership. We own it. But the quality of the imported material is about the fellowship to the foreign companies. And at last, young man and young woman, enlighten your hearts by knowing your religion the history of your country, the resources of your land, the ability of your fellow citizen, the shade of your skies, and the love of your Lord. Enlighten your heart by knowing your religion, the history of your country, the resources of your land, the ability of your fellow citizen, the shades of your skies, and the love of your Lord. Never, ever lose any inch of your agricultural land. Because it's a God-given gift to you for the future generation. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.